Do you know the world's white rift top? Have you ever felt her wintry blast as the shadows drift and change? Do you know the long day's patience down on frozen grass while the heads of heads is laying within range? Well, I'll tell you, it's here we're going for the years of plans and dreams you shall never know. For we've sworn an oath on the horns of the Ovis Poli, and when mountain gods have called, we must go. It's like we're in some alternate universe invented where reality means nothing. When you see 58 inches of horn turn and stare at your direction on the skyline, you know that you're not in Kansas anymore. This is serious. The rubber's meeting the road, and the hunt is on. And they have the nose of a whitetail. They have the eyesight of an eagle and the wariness of a Ural sheep. There's definitely more people that go to Everest Base Camp and they shoot a Marco Polo every year. what it's all about for us, making yeah. memories in the mountains. Now these sheep aren't quite as heavy horned as the Alaskan variety, but are they beautiful? You know, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather and, and he was a sheep guy. He was the most perfect stone sheep I've ever seen. He had a 45 inch curl. Gordon, uh, you know, has had a fascination of big sheep, and the biggest sheep that he ever could find was Marco Polo sheep. Gordon read all these old books by these explorers. Theodore Roosevelt writes, Ovis Poli is the great wild sheep, the father and mother of all the wild sheep. He was originally discovered about 1256 AD by Marco Polo, hence the name. Gordon wanted to go and he never really had the ability financially to do it. And as a kid, I read the books and I wanted to do it. Building this business that we now have got in the way for me. Guy, he also read the books, heard me and Gordon talk about Marco Polo sheep hunting. Marco Polo says, there are great numbers of wild beasts, wild sheep of great size whose horns are a good six palms in length. For a long time, this was considered a romance. At last, some 600 years later, an English officer shot a sheep and proved that Marco Milioni, at least in this instance, was speaking the truth. One of the only photos in the entire book is of the Marco Polo sheep. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. He made it a point that before he got too old that he was going to go. I started planning out this hunt over 10 years ago and started saving every extra dollar I could. It just grew and grew and grew. And finally, I was within striking distance financially. And so then I have to select an outfitter and a country to go do this in. Tajikistan it is a country in the Asia, has border with China, Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, 8 million population. The capital of uh, Tajikistan is Dushanbe, the modern uh, city. Marco Polo is a generic term for all the sheep in Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan. The population estimates I've seen for Tajikistan are 20 to 25,000. <laughs> Between the research and the saving and scrimping, pretty soon my Marco Polo dream was, was becoming a reality. Set a goal like that and you save and scrimp for so long and plan for so long and put so much into it. When you get on that plane to go there, the pressure is intense because I'm hoping that this adventure lives up to everything I've put it up against. And these, these are just the foothills. This is just the start. It goes up to 24,000 feet from here. 
two days of flying, two days of driving. I don't know anywhere on the planet you could go. It's more remote than this. Uh, I've known Guy for a long time. I knew his dad when I was in my early 20s. And so Guy and I have been talking Marco Polo hunting for quite a few years. You know, in my opinion, Brian Martin is probably one of the premier mountain guides and outfitters probably in the world for his age. He and I are the exact same age, and I've never had a chance to hunt with him. We're gonna see just exactly what all this Asian mountain hunting experience is all about. We're just about, uh, what, about 600 uh, yards south of the Afghanistan border at 12,200 feet. This camp's been here for over 10 years. There's horns laying around in camp. Everybody's talking sheep and you want to get out there and hunt, and guess what? I tell you, nope, you boys have to climatize. We're just going to take it easy and cruise around the Jeeps and glass up on the hills and not going to do much of anything today. Look at some sheep, look at some ibex, get even more excited. Look at that, look at the tips. Those sheep are some of the most amazing animals I've ever seen. Their horns will grow twice the length in a year as a North American ram. In the spring and summer, the habitat and the grass must be such high protein and so green, it must be incredible to support a body size that big and that kind of horn growth. But I tell you, when you go there in the fall and winter, you look around, it looks like there's nothing there. I mean, it looks like a grasshopper would have to pack a lunch to get across one of those drainages. It's just literally, mostly just rock and dust. Let's say the average ram in Tajikistan is 15,000, 15,500. There's really not much feed above 16,500. So if you hear people saying they're shooting Marco Polo at 18, they probably do not adjust their altimeter watch. When you come to Asia, I've always said that you're gonna find your weakness. Now we got six big rams there. Not all big, but six. That I'm sure is the biggest. He's got the mass like an argali. When they're heavy below their chin, they're heavy. He's, he's tight and going like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised if he's bigger than you think. That's one of those ones, there's no ground shrinkage. And there's a reason they have you climatized for a few days. When they park at the base of that mountain and you start hiking up at 14,000 feet, hiking to 16, your world will change, let me tell you. Nobody's gonna perform at the highest level that they're used to. You know, I'm feeling every step and it's like you're walking on the moon, everything's in slow motion. Dan's even slower than me. We're at about 15,000 feet. I've never got my ass kicked this hard hiking. I think camp at 12,600 is gonna feel a lot better to us tonight, if anything, right? Yeah, better. They're in a beautiful spot, right below those big peaks, huh? Big ram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in that group now. We get up and we, f we find these sheep, and it's a band of rams, a big rams. Biggest rams Brian's ever seen 15 years of hunting there together. There's 11 rams and there's one giant in the bunch that's well over 60. We're watching them, they're not in a stockable position. So we start down off the mountain and left the sheep be. We should have just stayed up the night up there, right? One fella? Yeah. Would have been comfortable. Instead of, instead of killing the animal, <laughs> killing ourselves. <laughs> If we didn't know what was in here, you'd be a shooter, huh? Let's look for another papa. Where are rams? On the Off corner. The back this of that? This way? This way. Yeah. And the rams are lower on the mountain for some reason than they were, and they're in a much more stockable position. How far is it? 1,100. A hunter, if he wants a big animal, needs to know what it looks like. And I, I say anything over 56, 57 is a really, really big ram. 60 inch rams don't grow on trees. That group has at least half shooters. Really? If you see a giant ram, <laughs> you better try and get him because the chance of, of me seeing him the next year with another client is very slim. We want good distance, good sun, and good wind. 
So Brian and I are able to sneak up over the hill, barely peek up, and the rams are bedded on the little spine ridge underneath us. Got too close, actually. Came in on the same plane as they are, which means you've got to make the first shot count, and they can see you quickly. They were around a little over 300 yards. because the top rams had to see us before we could see the big ram. So he got up and gave a uh, guy a marginal shot. And then they spooked. At Marco Polo Sheep, you don't get a second chance. And they went two or three drainages deeper into the mountain range on us. That's when Brian said, we have to kill that big ram no matter what the cost, and it's gonna take a spike out. So the fifth day, we'd already camped out uh, at about 14,300 feet at a shepherd's hut. I had a tent that I stayed in because the, the shepherd's hut was a little crowded. We're living like the sheep herders. Yeah. Even they don't come up here this time of year, huh? Yeah, they leave because... They go lower? No they food? They go lower because of no food, yeah. For the sheep. The next morning we woke up and it was cold, probably 15 below zero and we start out up this drainage and we're hiking, hiking, climbing, climbing. Finally, we spot the rams and they're going up over into this basin that Brian's actually hunted before. And he tells me, we're gonna kill one or two of these rams. And usually when you spook them, it's really hard to get on them again. And these animals are not stupid. And they're very cunning and they're very careful. A nine, 10 year old ram does not get that big by being stupid. They're always getting hunted by snow leopards and poachers and, and hunters and wolves and bad winter conditions and fighting and getting injured during the rut. So any ram that lives at nine or 10 years old is a giant. So we start hiking and we're hiking, climbing, climbing, climbing up to 17,000 feet on the top of this ridge and peek over the other side down into this big bowl and basin and the rams are bedded down on a bench. Looked down and spotted him, kind of right where we thought they were gonna be. And our other guide, we call him, nicknamed him Saddam. His name is Mahabat Kanam. And Saddam, the guide, has gone up the bottom, but he's hiding in the grass at the bottom. We didn't really know where he was. He was down there watching, and he started to push a little bit, and, but the sheep got nervous and went the wrong way. Guy and I had to hustle down the ridge, got within about 460 yards of the rams, So he and I talk about it, I would stop a little short, he would go clear down to, to shooting distance of the saddle, and then Saddam will bump the rest of the rams and we'll see, and at least one of us is gonna get a shot at the rams. By the time Brian gets in position, the rams are all bunched up by then at the top of the saddle, and he's trying to pick out the big ram. I shot the ram the first shot. We didn't know what happened, honestly. Those rocks, they're coming back to you. Get, get to these rocks. My ram disappeared. Guy and I ran over the edge, and they we figured that they would come back up around us. Let them come, let them come. The first one, the first one is big. 280. so strong and so sturdy and so hardy that, I mean, Brian's ram was shot right through the heart and still ran 150 yards before it died. Mine was pounded through both lungs. It's almost like those, those big rams have too much pride to die in sight. Is he dead? Yes! What did he say? Boom! Big ram down! 
God. Congratulations, Brian. Thank you, man. This has been awesome. Holy, we have worked hard for three days, huh? Today, I said to myself, if I kill a ram today, this will be the worst, best day of my life. You were slowing down today a little bit. 16.5 will do that to you. This old guy, he's a giant. He's giant. The face is very big, but the size what is beauty. The size is. Holy cow! You can take the picture before just moving it. In this position, look. It is two, three centimeters oh, broken. Yeah. He's old. Thank you, Brian. Look at this. Thank teeth. you. His base is as big as my thigh. This ain't no doll sheep. The guy did a great job, closed the deal. About 260, 280. Yeah, just a tremendous ram. If you look at his teeth, looks like an old grizzly bear's teeth. Doesn't get much better than this. No, I'll kill an old ram like that. Brian's ram, there was no question. Hey, that thing's a monster. We just didn't know how big of a monster it really was. And let me tell you, this ram is world class. There's one with it, it's 16,000. Look at that thing. Oh, oh my God. That doesn't look real. I can't breathe. I've been hunting in Tajikistan since 2005 with clients and never shot an animal. So to finally take one after 12 years, it was a long time. This is what a big ram looks like, folks. If you get bigger than this, let us know. They're 56. He's over 64 inches. So you shot a ram bigger than your tape? Yes. Our expedition into Central Asia was a closed chapter, a memory of glorious days on the high Himalaya, of long stalks, some successful, some otherwise, a kaleidoscope of toil and achievement that only experience can purchase. For a true mountain hunter, everything that you want in a mountain hunt to challenge you is here in a mortal pole hunt. It's not as bad as it looks, but it's not good either. You're not going to be walking through any doorways, I'll tell you that. No. Base Camp Tango in the rearview mirror. The old yak dung hut. He had a beautiful white stripe down the back of each leg. A great stone ram like this fellow here. The trophy of a lifetime. I'll never kill another stone sheep. One's enough for any man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>